let us uh, continue that uh, design of rectangular bunker which I have covered in the previous uh, video. So in the previous video, I had explained uh, how to design the dimensions of the rectangular bunker and also how to design the vertical wall. Now in this, uh, this is a continuation of the video, we will see how we can design the hopper bottom. How we can design the hopper bottom. So there will be four hopper bottoms uh, slabs uh, in plan as you see, it will be like this. So there will be opening at the center like this and you will be having four uh, slabs like this. So these are the hopper bottom slabs. So we have to design these hopper bottom slabs. So I have taken here one slab and like this another slab I have taken. It makes an angle of 45 degrees horizontal. And uh, let me assume the thickness of this slab as 180 mm. And the dimensions are like this. If you calculate, so these uh, dimensions are uh, in the last lecture, in that problem I have given, this inclined dimension slope becomes uh, 1.25 to root 2. Uh, because this is 1.25 and this angle is 45 degrees. So this becomes actually, it will be 1.25 divided by cos uh, 45, which becomes uh, 1.25 into root 2, this length. And here, center of the slab I have taken as G. So this, from the center we have to measure the height. So at the center, whatever uh, height of the material is there, till the top, including the subject portion, it comes out to the 4.475 meter. <coughs> and also, I, this total width is here 3 meters. So I have, I have written the center line here, so it bifurcates 1.5 meters this side and 1.5 meters this side. So total width is 3 meters, opening is uh, 0.5 meters. Now here, let us uh, uh, see how we can design the upper bottom slab. So first we have to calculate the total uh, weight acting on all the four slabs. Then we have to divide that by 4 to get the weight on each slab. So weight of the core as we calculated in the earlier uh, class, it has come, come to be uh, 304. So we have to design the uh, bunker for 300 kN. But anyway, we are providing for 304.64 kN. So assuming a 180 mm thick slab, uh, the self weight of the slab will be 4 into, so 4 means there is number of slabs and I will include the 4 slabs here into we have to take the average width here. So it is 3 meters here at the top and uh, it is uh, 0.5 meter opening at the bottom. So the average width becomes 3 plus 0.5 by 2 into the sloping side. Sloping side is 1.5 meter root 2 into thickness into density. So this is density of uh, all bridge from our RCC. So density is 25 kilometer per meter cube. So if you calculate this entire thing, the total weight it, it is expressed in terms of kilometer, that is a single point load. So this is width into inside slope into thickness. This gives the volume. So volume of one slab into four volume of four, that is one over four slabs into density gives the weight. So it comes out to be 55.69 kilometer. The total weight coming on the four slabs is 55 point, uh, sorry, total weight of all the four steps, self weight, self weight of all the four steps is 55 point six nine. Now the total weight becomes whatever weight of coal it should uh, retain plus this self weight it comes up to be 360.33 kN. So this 360.33 kN is taken by all the four steps. So therefore, weight on each step will be 360.33 divided by 4, writing point zero eight. Now we have to get into the direct tension also on this slab. The direct tension is related to this weight. Uh, so in the first class, in the design step I have told you that. So the direct tension T is given by so this W, whatever W is there, divided by 745. So tension force will act like this. Weight will act like this. So this is 45 degree. Therefore, for equilibrium, you can say that T sin 45 is equal to uh, W. So therefore, uh, T will be equal to W divided by 745, which is 127.4 kilonewton. Now, per meter width, since it's a slab, 
uh, it is 3 meters width. Therefore, for 1 meter width, the design length is this once again divided by 3. Of course, we have to multiply by 1.5, that is the partial safety factor in the limit state method for this uh, load. So, 1.5 into 127.4 divided by 3, which comes out to be 63.7 kilometer per meter. Now, the formula to find the steel required for the tension is uh, this whatever Tu, we can take this as Tu, so whatever Tu is there, Tu into this is B, B is 1000 mm divided by 0.7 into Fy. So, Fy grader, he has, uh, he has given it as 415 grader, that you have to take it. Simplify that, you get 1 by 176.4 millimeter square as the uh, steel required. But, we have to check for minimum steel. Usually in any slab, in any slab, the minimum steel is 0.12% of the gross cross sectional area. We have to check for minimum steel. So 0.12% of B into D, where B is once again 1000 mm and D is uh, 180 mm. More or less thickness, 180 mm we have assumed. So it comes out to be 216 mm square. We can observe here that the minimum steel required is more than whatever is got. So therefore we have to provide this one. So normally steel is provided in two phases, uh, in two layers, you can say two phases. So therefore A S and each phase will be half of this, 108. So 108, so if you assume 8 mm diabolic, so if you provide 8 mm at 300 mm center to center, that will take care of this, 108. So all this uh, you can get from the SP 16. Now this is the reinforcement for the tension. Now reinforcement for bending the middle stick. So definitely due to the weight of core and sulfide, bending will be there at the middle stick. Because this, this is like a simply supported uh, uh, slab uh, where the maximum bending moment, uh, positive bending moment occurs at the middle stick. So we have to calculate uh, the uh, value of uh, bending moment of at the middle stick also. If you consider the middle stick, so we are going to calculate one thing called uh, total normal pressure is divided by Pn, which is given by this formula. This I had explained in the uh, first uh, lecture on the video in the design steps. Okay? So this is the formula you have to remember. So gamma h cos square theta plus gamma h cos square plus h square theta plus ws cos theta. So if you substitute the values, gamma h is given for four as 8 kilometer per meter cube. So 8 into this h is the, please note that this h is the depth of the from the center. So what is the half can say height? Height of this uh, whatever bunker is there at the level of midpoint of this slab. So if you see that it will come to, comes out to be 4.475. So because from here to here we know the value, from here to here, of, of, of course from here to here it is 3.5 meters. Then surcharge, half of surcharge we have to take. So surcharge we can see that here it is 0.7. So half of that 0.7 is 0.35. So 0.35 plus 3.5, so that is 3.85. 3.85 plus whatever is there here. This value. This value is 1.25 divided by 2. If you do all the simplifications, so H value you will be getting 4.475. So into of course cos square theta is 45 degree. That is the angle made by the slab with the horizontal that we have assumed. So plus once again gamma is 8 into h is 4.475 cos square 25 degree is the angle of repose. So it is 25 degree into sin square 45 degree theta plus ws is the weight of the slab only. So weight of the slab you can see it is uh, uh, it is 0.18 to 25. Of course, since the value is in kilometer per meter square, you need not multiply by the depth, uh, you need not multiply by the width. Okay? So, we are, we are getting the value of uh, uh, this pressure in terms of kilometer per meter square, not in terms of kilometer per meter. So, kilometer per meter square means only thickness you have to multiply. Into cos theta is cos 45. If you simplify the zeta, I think you are getting the normal pressure acting uh, at the middle stick one as 35.785 kilometers per meter square. Now, the effective span, so to calculate the bending moment, now this is the pressure. Instead of force, we are calculating the pressure. 
span they have to take. So span is something what once again, it is the average of the span because the biggest peak we are calculating, this is 3, this is 0.5. So therefore, this becomes uh, 3 plus 0.5 divided by 2. So this uh, distance will become 3 plus 0.5 divided by 2. So now, if, of course, since it is effective span, we have to add the uh, overall uh, uh, the depth of the snap form that this is clear span. You can go on and pick it effective by 1.9 millimeter. Now, maximum negative when you move it, maximum negative when you move it is given by PN L square by 12. So, PN is this, L is 1.93, square of that divided by 12, you will be getting 11.1 kilometer meter. And if you convert uh, that to your uh, what you can say the positive factor if you apply 1.5 for the load so you will be getting 16.66 so 1.5 into 11.1 for this moment uh, we have to design the reinforcement now your effective depth is 150 and the so effective power is 30 mm overall depth is 180 mm effective depth will be 150 mm now as per SP16 or if you use uh, IS456 SP16 tables are available for this MU. So for a give for a given value of uh, moment of resistance or uh, MU value, you can always compute the speed required for different uh, combinations of rates of compute and speed. So in this case, so he has given F P415 steel and M20 concrete. For this combination, you can read the value of uh, reinforcement directly from SP16. Otherwise, if you are using IS4 basis, you have to solve the equation, quadratic equation uh, in terms of ASP. Two values of ASP you are going to get, out of which uh, you have to choose one value. Okay? So, but directly, if you are using SP16, directly you can get the steel value. I hope you know how to use the SP16. So, for this steel, if you are using tethered diameter bar, the spacing, in the case of slabs, sir, we deal with spacings. So, if you draw a tethered at 240 mm center to center, that steel is obtained. Now, similarly, you have to design for uh, positive moment at mid span, as I already told, in slabs, sir. So, middle, at, at the middle of the, middle of the span, if you have a positive bending moment, the bound of a positive bending moment, P n L square by 24. So this is important, you have to remember that this is important. Please see the difference here. Negative moment is more, P n L square by 12, and positive moment is P n L square by 24. So this is half of this. So definitely, if you simplify, you will get half of the moment what you have got here. So the two gain point is the half of this. And once again, using SP16 or IS4.6, you can calculate ASP, you are getting 158 mm square, but you have to keep for minimum, very important. ASP minimum you have to check, that is 0.12% of uh, BD, which you are once again getting as 216, whatever you have got here, same value you are getting here. So, in this value you have to have, because this is less than the minimum required. When you get from the calculation, any ASP value, you have to check if the value is less, you have to check for minimum ASP. So minimum ASP in case of slab is 0.12% of B into capital D. So now, since this is less than the minimum required, we have to provide this value. Now uh, this completes the design of uh, uh, upper bottom slabs. Now all the four slabs we have to provide with the same type of reinforcement and in this sketch, then I ask you to skip the report for details also. So you can show the details of the enforcement for both the wall as well as the hopper bottom. So this portion is the wall portion and this portion is the hopper bottom portion. So if you take, you can take only half of the section and you can show the reinforcement. So whatever we have designed, those things are incorporated here in this sketch. So you can go through the sketch. All the simple sketch is enough. This is not a drawing, this thing. Design is important. And rough sketch at the end of the design, I can do. So that means in the case of the design of a rectangular bunker, three important steps are there. 
first step we are fixing the dimensions of the bunker second step we are designing the vertical wall third step we are designing the upper bottom slab of course column design and column footing design they are similar to our rcc designs i hope you only thing is you should be uh, familiar with using familiar uh, with using the that is sp16 and is456 uh, uh, ports for reading the reinforcements directly so if you know moment of resistance or moment maximum ready moment acting on any slab or beam so by knowing the grades of concrete and steel or different grades of concrete and steel in tabular form they have given the values of reinforcements required in sp16 so directly you can get those values sometimes you may have to interpolate the exact value you may not get you may have to linearly interpolate the values so after interpolation you can get the Uh, reinforcement required, and you can assume the diameter of the bar and calculate the spacing of the bar. So that will give the reinforcement details.